the cabaret of Dr. Caligari. Welcome once more to my grand guignol, my hackney empire of the senses. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so pleased to see you patronize my palace of the perverse. Perverse? <laughs> the dance macabre that can thrill and chill the very essence of our souls. Our souls! <laughs> We have learnt many things in our six-week sojourn on the dark side of humanity. We have learnt how low you can sink. We have learnt how far you will fall. We have learnt how to make an attractive pencil case from sticky back plastic and an old fairy liquid bottle. But mainly we have learnt never to work with you two malevolent morons again. Demonic assistance! Demonic assistance! Ah! I've seen more demonic things working on the night shift at the 7-Eleven! Six weeks I've suffered your inane interruptions. Six weeks I've sat by and watched you replace hell and damnation with cannon and ball. Well, no more. As soon as tonight's tale is told, it's back to boiling brimstone for Beelzebub for the both of you. No, no, I do the guy. It's so boring down there. They never give us any decent damn to torment. Yeah, just the stupid stuff. Like making rich women hand over their skins to freezing cold minks. Please, give us one last chance. Please, Mother, please. 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 Oh, very well then. Oh. One last Stop licking the suit! You have your reprieve. But if either one of you put so much as a cloven hoof wrong, then so help me, I'll see you're both cast down into the bottomless pit. Oh, anything but the bottomless pit! Yes, we look dead silly with no bottoms. Then watch it. Consider it watched. On with the episode. Anthrax to the music, snuff to the special effects. We will terminate our tenure of this venomous venue with something somewhat special. An incision. A dissection. A story stripped bare of our customary levity to reveal the twitching nerves beneath the skin. A public post-mortem for the corpse of the health service. A tale we entitle, The Body Politic. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, representatives of the press, it gives me great pleasure to look around this room today and see so many of you present at the launch of a scheme which I feel will signal the start of a tough, new, radical reconsideration of the way we run healthcare in this country. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For too long now, we have pumped our life's blood funding into antiquated establishments such as the Victorian relic we're standing in today. For too long, we have kept alive the old, the inefficient, the marginal, and rendered ourselves anemic through the process. Absolutely. Now, for the health of the whole system, we find that it is necessary to amputate some of these ailing appendages. Now, for the survival of the whole, we find that we must cut. Ladies and gentlemen, today we stand in the rotting hulk of the Nightingale Hospital. But tomorrow, tomorrow we will be standing in Nightingale Cloisters. Yeah. 
<laughs> You'd be so good as to unveil the model. <laughs> 75 studio flats, nine penthouses, shops, a swimming pool and a gymnasium for the use of residents. New housing in an area crying out for a more, a, a more mixed income economy. Now, any questions? Uh, Minister, 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 yes, Minister, yes, 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 yes. Doctors in other hospitals say the closure of the Nightingale has placed an intolerable strain on the uh. remaining local services. A strain they cannot bear. Any comment? G gentlemen, ladies, must all our thoughts today be steered by the whinges and whines of, 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 of vested interests who cannot see beyond the ends of their own stethoscopes? Yeah, yeah. Look, the health service is, as we've said on many occasions, safe in our hands. A project like this merely help, helps to keep those hands free of unnecessary burdens. Now, any perhaps more constructive questions? When does it open? Um, I'm sorry? I said, when does it open? Oh, uh, well, I'm not entirely sure of the exact opening date, but um, the demand for properties like this is so high, I'm sure the developers will pull out all the stops. But it will open. It's not some gentleman's passing fence. Oh, yes, yes. No amount of protest from the vocal minority will cause me to suffer second thoughts. This scheme has my wholehearted support. And it will open soon? Soon enough for me? Yes, soon enough even for you. <laughs> no, no, no. It is gratifying to see such enthusiasm from a, a member of the local community. I'm glad you haven't all been taken in by rent a mob demonstrating outside. Well, I want to be taken in. What? You promised me I would be. Uh, I believe there have been discussions about allowing local people limited access to the health club facilities, if that's what you mean. I mean that you promised you would let me in. Me and my child. Uh, oh, well, um, well, it's good to see a parent with ambitions for their child. I'm sure if they study hard and work hard, perhaps one day they'll be able to afford a place here. But you said it was going to be free. I said no such thing. You said it was going to be free for those who had nothing. I certainly did not. Look, who exactly do you represent? If this is some sort of lunatic protest... You said I... they wouldn't ask for money. This has always been a private development. I saw your promise in the newspaper. Hmm? Someone else read it to me, but I saw it. The Royal Victoria Working Men's Trust announced the establishment of a new charitable infirmary. That meant you were going to build a hospital for us. Us, who had never had hospitals before. You said that. I did not. You lied to me. What are you doing? What have you got wrapped up in those rags? Here. A poor woman's gift to a rich man. Take it. But this child is not moving. Take it. This, this child is... Is dead. Guard. Guard. Guard! Right here, sir. How did that woman get in here? She's deranged, unhinged, throw her out! Woman, sir? Yes, the one with with, with, with that thing in the bundle. I'm not aware of anyone here with any bundles, Mr. Meager. She's standing right there. The boys on the door have been screening everyone for bombs, sir. They wouldn't have let anyone with a bundle in. But... No, 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 you're quite right. <sighs> I must have had a little bit too much complimentary champagne, eh? <laughs> you know how it is. No, uh, of course, sir. Yes. Uh, would you like us to search the building again, uh, just to be on the safe side? Uh, no, 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 it's all right. I've been feeling a little run down recently. Let's just put this one down to too much work, too little sleep. That eh? happens to the best of us, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes. Shall I call for your car? Yes, yes, I've had quite enough of this place for one day. I think I'm going down with some kind of cold. Oh, it's these big old buildings, sir. When they get left empty for so long, they do tend to get a little, ah, uh, chill. <laughs> Mr. Meager's car to the front, now! Forgive me for asking, sir, but are you all right? Of course I'm all right, Barker. Only you look a bit pale, sir. Just feeling a little under the weather, that's all. Oh, for God's Stop sake. Stop worrying about me and worry about your driving instead. <clears throat> Sorry, sir. Home? Yes, Barker, home. I always thought I'd die at home. What? Tucked up in me slumberland with me family around me and something worth quoting coming out on me final breath. Like the end of a film. How did you get in here? Barker, pull over. It'll be another 12 minutes at least. Barker! Oh, whenever those go like that, of course. 
for most of us is the lungs or the heart. Plastic tubes up the nose and everyone watching the bleeps on the machine in case they stop. Barker, I'm locked in here with some kind of lunatic. Will you stop the car? It's all this bloody traffic, these bloody cars. The siren's going full blast, but they still don't get out of the way. Me, of course. I didn't even get that. All I got was some spotty kid in a fiesta who shot around the corner and shot the legs out from under me. <laughs> Trust me, Locke. I didn't even get to smoke or drink myself to death. Will you stop talking like that? How did you break in here? What? Why, why are you bleeding? I, I never knew I had it in me. That much, I mean. I left half of it back there on the road, upsetting the pedestrians. God, why yeah, me? Yeah, we all asked that. Barker, do something. This man back here is bleeding to death. I'm doing the best I can, but the hospital's still over three miles away. Ah! No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I... was the kid in the fiesta. He kept apologising, <laughs> apologising, like he expected me to get up and walk away if he did it well enough. I'd, I'd like to have obliged him. No, I really would. Oh, I, I, I wish there was some way I could help you. You know the last thing I saw before he hit me? One of those furry Garfield dolls that he had stuck on his windscreen. Oh, God. <laughs> it's funny. I never expected the angel of death to look like Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Barker, how much longer, man? Seven, eight minutes, can't be sure. It's not long, not far to go, you'll be all right. Yeah. A hospital. <laughs> Work miracles these days, don't they? Yes, they do. We're soon going to be there. We'll... Look, 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 there it is. I can see it, we're almost at the hospital. I'll hold on. You'll be all right. I'll hold on and I'll be all right. You'll be up and walking. Walking around? Yes, finishing your walk. Walking up to the kid who almost killed me. Like nothing happened. And I'll forgive him. I'll accept his apology. Uh, uh, Barker? Barker, slow down. Slow down, Barker. We're passing the hospital. Walking right past. You're driving right past the hospital. Walking away. Why don't you stop? Walking into the sunset. Why don't you stop? Where have you been hiding yourself, mate? That was the nightingale. What? Bastards closed casualty there years ago. Won't be at the general for another five minutes at least. Just like the end of a film. Do you hear that? Just five more minutes. Just... Oh, Christ, we're losing him. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir? I said faster, damn you, we're losing him! I wasn't aware we were being followed, sir. The press, is it? What are you talking about, you idiot? I mean, the... Oh, oh, God, not again. I'm sorry, sir, I don't understand. Oh, it's a fever. I... It's a fever, that's all. I... I'm under a lot of stress and I've picked up some kind of infection that's making me... Uh, making me... Um... Delirious? Yes, del look, when I need a dictionary, Barker, I'll ask you for one, all right? Where are we? <sighs> Quite close to your house now. Good, well, get me there as quickly as you can. Yes, sir, we'll have you there in five minutes. <laughs> in here, Philip. Hello. You were on the television again just now. That hospital conversion thing. They showed you lording it over a balsa wood model and sounding like some kind of Victorian mill owner. I videoed it for you, but you were on and off so quickly, you'll have to watch it on freeze frame to see it at all. It's not now, Jessica. I'm not up to it at the moment. My God. You look terrible. What have you been doing to yourself? I don't know. I wish I did. Well, whatever it was, I'd give it up if I were you. Remember what the doctor said? Yes, I remember, but this is just flu. I'm going upstairs to lie down for a while. Good. And while you're resting, think about what you want... Oh, no. Who can that be now? I'll answer it. Uh, you will not. You're going upstairs to rest. I'll open the front door of my own house if I want to. Oh. I'm ill. I'm not an invalid. I'm sorry. I showed concern. It won't happen again. Mr. Meager? Yes? Mr. Philip Meager? Yes? What do you want? I am most pleased to meet you. Good. Well, now you have. Please go away. No. Wait, sir. You misunderstand. I believe you are expecting me. I'm expecting no one. But look. Look. I, I have the papers. What's this supposed to be? The papers. The agreement between us. You see, there is your name and address. And also your handwriting. I didn't sign this. I've never made any agreement. It does look a little like my handwriting, but it's a fake. It, it's a fake. Look at the date. It's wrong. It's, it says 1999. But I brought your merchandise. 
Look, I don't want any merchandise. But you must. There was an agreement. I, I have travelled such a long way, and my family are dependent on it. I'm sorry you've had a wasted journey. Somebody obviously played some kind of an elaborate joke. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm feeling ill enough as it oh, is without... Then you... I am in the right place after all. Let us please talk inside. But, but you took... But you took... How dare you? How dare you invade my home like this? Mr. Meager, I am a poor man from a poor country. Right. Work is not plentiful, and I am forced to take any task I can find. <sighs> Sometimes I lift and carry, sometimes I, I dig or fill in, and sometimes, when nothing else is available, I sell. I thought you said you didn't have anything. I have my own body. I can sell its labor or its blood. Blood? This is nothing unusual in my land. The poor often donate a little life's blood towards the running of the rich. And in return, they eat a little better. It is an accepted practice. My wife has also made regular deposits at the blood bank, and my children have expressed an interest. The prospect of toys, you see. Oh, that's disgraceful. It is a way of making a living. Now do you understand? No, no. Then I must continue. Greater sums could be earned by those willing to make more substantial donation. I had two kidneys and my children could not read. Now I have only one and they are learning. Oh, this is disgusting. Bone marrow fetches the highest prices. You pay in pain, but the interest you receive can take you from the shanty towns and into the concrete high rises. We now have such a home and my bones Sometimes they scream. Now is the purpose of my visit any clearer to you? No. No, it isn't. Look, look, I'm sorry you've been forced to live this way, but I fail to see what it's got to do with me. But you must. I have a new home. New debts I cannot afford to pay. We have an agreement in writing. It's a fake. I don't want anything of yours. But I can see from your face that you do. <sighs> You are pale and in pain. Surely you would be willing to pay for the prospect of an extra sunrise or two? You'll get nothing from me. I'm perfectly all right. Are you sure, Mr. Meager? Are you certain? Is that not perspiration on your brow? No, it's flu. Is that not a tremor in your hand? It's fever. And is that not a long, dull, fatal ache in your chest? Oh. It's a murmur, that's all. The overwork, the flu. Doctor said it was nothing. Nothing? Hmm. Good. Then I will be able to honor our agreement after all. What? Here. For the sake of my children, for the sake of your soul, take the one thing I have that a man like you needs. Have a heart. <laughs> I don't care what you say, I'm calling Dr. Herbert. Where's the video remote? On the table there. Look, I'm ringing Dr. It's Herbert. It's the tape in the machine. What tape? Of the news broadcast of that damn Nightingale place. It's ready to play. That's where it all began. That's why they started haunting me. Oh, God, where is it? Damn it. Stop working yourself into such a state and you might find it. Oh, there they are. Who? At the edge of the crowd at the press conference. At the edge and out of focus. All three of them. I can't see anyone. Oh, they're clever. They're clever people, all right. People with resources. People with money. Money that can buy the cooperation of drivers and security men. Philip, I can't see anyone at all. I'm a victim. I'm the victim of some fantastic act of mental terrorism. And it's something I can't tell anybody about. Something I can't share. No one would believe what they're capable of. But Philip, you can't go out. Oh. Not like this. Where are you going to? To the place where all this started. To the place where it's all going to end. You must stay here. No. Wait for the doctor. No need. No need at all. I'm going to the Nightingale. Board it up. 
but I know you're in there. I can hear you. I can sense you. I can see light creeping through the cracks. Oh, God. Oh, damn splinters. I'm in now. Just got to squeeze in through the gap. Ah, there you are, my friend. We've been looking all over for you. It doesn't do to keep the students waiting too long, now does it? Students? Hmm, a lively bunch they are, too. They've been looking forward to this lecture for weeks. Let's hope we don't disappoint them, eh? <laughs> now, if you'd be so kind as to step this way. But who, who are you? What do you want from me? Trust me, I'm a doctor. What? Ah, and here we are. The theater. The theater. Uh, you are in equity, aren't you? <laughs> Just a little surgeon's joke. But this is a theater. It's an old, derelict theater. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the subject of tonight's demonstration, Mr. Philip Meager. Place him on the operating table, nurses. Oh, yes. What, what are you doing? <laughs> What's all this in aid of? What do you want? Merely to help you, to hmm? save you from the sickness that now ravages your system. And to provide an example to others. What? What? For too long we have kept alive the old, the inefficient, oh. the marginal, and rendered ourselves anemic through the process. Oh, oh. Now, for the survival of the greater whole, we find it is necessary to amputate oh. some of these ailing appendages. No, no! Now, for the good of the body politic, we find that we must come. Oh, no! No! Don't worry. Your health is quite safe in our hands. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hold the patient down, will you, sister? <laughs> Let us administer the anesthetic. No, no, no. Doctor, you cancelled the order, remember? Ah, but of course, a petty extravagance. No! No! Scalpel nurse! Scalpel! Oh, hold oh, him oh, hard, oh, my friends! Oh, oh, this will oh, hurt him far more oh, than it hurts us! Oh, Let oh, us cut! Oh, a patronizing throwback, an insult to independence, useless, oh. flapping ornaments, and really quite redundant. <laughs> This is the pain of the time before, of the days when these grounds knew no hospital. We lived in your hovels. We learned your contempt. We died far too early. There was no hope in that time. Let there be none for you. Pedal parasite. Ah, a disincentive to private car ownership. Let them stand on their own two feet. No. <laughs> this is the pain of the time that is. Of the days when the assets are stripped and the freedoms are gutted. We live in some comfort. We learn not to care. We die without realization. There is no sense of loss in this time. Let there be none for you. Cat three! No! 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 Bestial blood pump. Disgusting anachronism. We'll remove it wholesale and sell it retail. <laughs> and fill the grizzly hole with something more appropriately plastic. This is the pain of the time to come. Of the time when the ailing rich raid the organ orchards of the poor, hungry for prize pickings. We live in their slums. We learn their brutality. We die far too early. There will be no compassion in this time. Let there be none for you. 
help me. I have no more gifts for a rich man. It would take at least ten minutes to get you to casualty. I am afraid I am now completely sold out. Help me, please. How can we? We are but figments of your imagination, remember? And this hospital, this hospital is no longer a place of help. You have been listening to the law in the present series of the cabaret of Dr. Caligari. In case you're wondering, the others were funny. It was written by Alan Gilby and directed by Annie Edivine. It featured John Woodvine as Dr. Caligari, Victoria Wicks as Anthrax, John Shrapnel as Mr. Mega, Adjoa Andau as Mrs. Mega, Cassie McFarlane who was the past, Clan Smith was the present, and Alan Barker, he was a future. The part of snuff was played by Sylvester McCoy, and the rest of snuff was played by three trainee radio producers under a blanket. Oh, love me. Let me do that one. No, no, no. I say let me. And finally, listeners, although my morbid morality plays have now gone the way of all things fleshy, do not think that this lets you off the hook. Learn well the lessons you have heard here, or soon you may find yourselves joining Mr. Meager in his lonely little boat across the Styx. Stay away from... Temptation. Keep your noses clear. And always wear a condom. <laughs> always wear a condom? Well, I'm wearing one now. Ah, I thought that was a tie. <laughs> your own personal dark diversion is just around the corner. Someday, one day, we'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know. But I know we'll meet again sometime again. And Frax, snuff, go to hell. Oh, hell. I don't want to go to hell. Oh, 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 hell. O